Are you aware of what makes you vulnerable to having an affair? <laughs> Rarely do I work with someone who went out to have an affair. Rather, what I find is it was a failure to update ways of interacting in public or in the workplace. Peggy Vaughn wrote a book called The Monogamy Myth. One of her points is that what puts us at risk is the fact that we believe nothing can happen. And I heartily agree with Peggy. Once, while teaching a class at a graduate school of professional counselors, I made the comment that at least 50% of them sitting there in that room would end up straying in their marriages. One student immediately interrupted saying, Look, with the quality of our training, that's not true. And I said, with that statement, you're right. I think it's probably closer to 60%. You see, what places us at risk of breaking our commitments to our partner rarely is some sort of nefarious intent. Rather, it's a failure to consider the patterns of interactions that put us at risk. Like the graduate student, we believe there's no way this could happen. I cannot tell you how many times while doing premarital counseling, I feel like a man standing on a railroad track with a lantern in my hand, waving it back and forth, going, bridge out ahead, bridge out ahead. You have to change how you're reacting. And I'm told by that couple that that is not an issue for them. They truly love each other. Nothing is going to make them stray that we don't need to address this issue. The truth is, we're only as weak as our strongest link. And it's our belief that nothing can happen that allows us to put ourselves in situations where something can or will. It's hubris that lets us think it won't happen. It takes humility to protect a marriage. Are you aware of the patterns of interaction with others that put your relationship and you at risk? Before you got married, did anyone sit down with you and encourage you to explore how you interact with people and how you want to change that to keep a relationship safe? <laughs> My challenge when working with couples comes from their belief that nothing's wrong with how they relate to others outside the marriage. And perhaps I'm preaching to the choir, given the fact that if you're watching this video, you already know that monogamy isn't a given. But are you willing to explore and change what you need to change to create safety? My favorite joke has always been, how many psychiatrists does it take to change a light bulb? And the answer is only one. But that light bulb's got to want to change really bad. <laughs> one of our sayings at Affair Recovery is, if you don't change directions, you'll wind up where you're headed. I personally believe all marriage problems happen between ages 0 to 18. And it's the procedural memories we developed earlier in life that place us at risk later in life. In this week's newsletter, I give examples of how old patterns of behavior in my life put me at risk. Just because you've always done it a certain way isn't an excuse for behaviors that put the relationship at risk. Even worse, we're blind to these patterns because our strategies of interacting are familiar. It's what we created as a child or an adolescent, as a way to interact. And we're created to allow us to survive those seasons of life. However, applying those same strategies we used as a single person in marriage can lead to disaster. I'm sure a few of you are going to think, yeah, this is great. My mate needs to hear this and read this newsletter because this is something they do. They don't have good boundaries or the way they interact puts them at risk. But I'd invite you to consider the possibility that you also have high risk behaviors. 
It's not good intentions. They're going to prevent infidelity. Good intentions don't protect a committed relationship. It's developing new ways of interacting with others outside of that relationship that creates safety. I had someone tell me their mate literally told them this. Well, I didn't hurt you intentionally. I didn't intentionally do this. And you know, there may be some truth, but those intentions don't change a thing. The first step to a fair proofing a marriage, which I think is impossible ultimately, but I can do this. I can affair proof myself. And it's to stop trusting myself and believing that I'm not at risk of betrayal. I have to examine my patterns of behavior outside of the marriage and consider how the ways of interacting impact the people around me. What am I doing to others as well as being honest about what makes me vulnerable? This week's newsletter begins to look at an old pattern of behavior that I needed to change. I do hope you'll take the time to read this newsletter because to me, the thought process I begin to go through might reveal some ways that you would like to look at it differently. I've been trying to find a way to communicate how we can begin to look at those old patterns we learned from childhood and see them differently and how to develop new healthy patterns. And if you don't mind, please leave a comment as to whether you find looking at this issue from this perspective is helpful or not. I've been trying to find a way to talk about this topic and I'm using an approach in the newsletter of parts. How, what are the parts of me and what are they saying? And if you find it useful, there is a whole bunch of things I'd like to write about in terms of how we see things and behaviors we need to examine to keep us safe. I'm Rick Reynolds, founder and president of Affair Recovery. It's healing.